Hi, I am Rémi Cresson. I'm with the French Institute for Agriculture, Food and Environment. And I'll uh, try to present uh, you the OTBTF extension for deep learning. Uh, I knew it. Where's the mouse? Okay. I'm sorry. I made my presentation with uh, HTML. It's, uh, it's really difficult to move the mouse because it is very, very slow and with uh, some uh, latency, you know. <laughs> okay. So in short, uh, OTBTF is an extension for the Orpheo toolbox, and uh, it, it, it aims to, to provide uh, the developers or users generic framework to, to build uh, deep learning-based applications. I will uh, detail what you can do with it in a few moments. But, uh, its main purpose was uh, to do some research, to conduct some research uh, like uh, uh, land cover mapping and uh, image restoration but also for education and uh, finally to put some uh, research results in production. Uh, for instance, in the Tayland uh, data center. And um, yes, its goal is basically to use deep learning techniques. So to do that, you have to create some data sets, to train models and to apply them on real world uh, remote sensing images. So you can apply model in, in, in OTB applications and this has several benefits. For instance, uh, the data stream is uh, continuous and uh, from the images that you read to the image that you write, you need a very small memory footprint and uh, the pipeline guarantee good performance uh, uh, in terms of uh, computational uh, stuff. Yes. Okay. So, uh, it is a project uh, which has started four years ago. It has a lot of improvement since. And uh, I think the main uh, improvements over the year are the following, the documentation, of course. Uh, we provide some Docker, Docker images, Docker builds, because compiling TensorFlow is a pain, and uh, compiling OTB is, is OK, thanks to the super build. But compiling TensorFlow, it's, it's like uh, four hours of com compil compiling uh, stuff with Bazel, so it's really difficult. So the Docker uh, build uh, is all that. And we provide one image for the uh, GPU uh, using the um, NVIDIA Docker uh, support for Ubuntu. We also improved the CI and CD uh, with uh, static analysis and test, functional tests, application tests, and finally some automated uh, ship of the Docker images. And soon the documentation will be shipped also as well. And recently we had the TensorFlow 2 support. Why it's so important? Because uh, TensorFlow 1 was really ugly to use and for developer to debug, it was really ugly. That's why a lot of people went to PyTorch, you know, but TensorFlow 2 is all that. It's really easy to, to code now. And it has a lot of advantages, especially for distributed uh, training. So I will talk a bit about distributed training later. And yes, uh, very recently, like uh, two months ago, we have released the last version with uh, some Python classes. We can now talk about Python API. It's a set of classes that use the uh, deep learning practitioners to uh, do their uh, work. I will detail a bit uh, all that. You can clone uh, the, the code here on GitHub, and you can pull the, the Docker images uh, on the, uh, this uh, Docker Hub. Okay. Okay, now it's the other error. Okay. Okay, you know what, I think I will use that to go from left to right and the mouse to go down. Yes, okay, so what's, uh, what's OTBTF, what's deep learning, what's computational graph? Here you have uh, the Orpheo toolbox which targets uh, remote sensing images processing. TensorFlow is like a big calculator. It uh, it works on computational graph, which process multidimensional uh, data arrays. And using that, you can do some machine learning, uh, deep learning. So you can uh, 
perform deep learning with OTBTF, but you can also perform just uh, numeric uh, computations. Uh, for instance, complex uh, algebra stuff that you can parallelize on GPUs, but you won't have to, uh, you, you don't want to, to put the hand in the, in the code uh, low level. So you can just write some simple Python, co Python code using a uh, TensorFlow and ship the model into OTBTF and run the model into pipelines using other uh, OTB applications. For instance, uh, okay, that's just a slide on uh, what's TensorFlow computational graph. Uh, it's just uh, some uh, symbolic programming. You define some operators and uh, you link them together and they process uh, the tensor and uh, in a given order from uh, start to, to the end. You can do a lot of things. I won't uh, go deeper in this uh, matter. But you can do some uh, very simple model. For instance, this is a scalar product. Okay, it's like five line of code just for one scalar product, but you understand why. You can define two inputs, name x1 and x2, uh, compute the scalar product. So here you just start defining the computational graph. Nothing is executed. And you just save a model. This is some uh, Google protobuf uh, format. And uh, that's all. You just have build a model, which is deterministic, and it takes x1, x2, uh, compute the scalar products, and nothing else. And it, uh, of course, it has an y output, which is a result. Then, uh, using OTBTF, you can use this model with two inputs, uh, namely real, real world images, uh, for instance, two Sentinel-2 images, and you can run the inference uh, meaning you can run the model over these images using all the um, complex pipelining stuff of the free auto box, which deals with uh, memory footprints and stuff uh, automatically. So you just to, to create your model and then put it in production, as simple as that. Okay. Now we are coming to deep learning. Uh, the main problem with deep learning is that you can read a lot of cool papers with guys uh, who are motivated by uh, publish one paper on a big, uh, you know, uh, journal. And uh, I think that often it doesn't really work in real life. You know, when you want to apply the model on, on images, uh, it, it is not really uh, simple because guys didn't mention that the processing time is like two days to process uh, uh, a small image, uh, stuff like that. So I'm not really happy. I was not happy with the way uh, I approached uh, deep learning. So uh, the idea is to provide the people who uh, apply deep learning on remote sensing images with a set of tools uh, that, that guide them to, um, to, to create something that works, that really works on uh, remote sensing images. Okay. So I will detail all that a, a bit later. So what uh, the feature of the uh, OGBTF are compared to the Orpheo to Toolbox baseline? Uh, there's an additional applications uh, for users, for, for instance, uh, for, uh, for teaching, uh, people want to code, so they just uh, want to uh, train a model, so we give them a few, um, a few models built uh, uh, the same way I was uh, describing with the Scala product, and people are just using an OTB application to train the model. So you, you won't go that far with this approach, but at least you can learn what deep learning is and how it can be applied on remote sensing images. And uh, for production, we have, of course, one single application dedicated to model inference. And uh, this one can be used uh, for teaching, but also uh, to, to in processing a chain in uh, operational uh, centers. Uh, we use that uh, in, in real world uh, production center. I will show some example in the, the second part of this uh, presentation. And finally, uh, we have uh, recently this uh, P P Python classes dedicated uh, for model training. And uh, it targets many data scientists rather than uh, GIS experts, like it's the case with the, uh, the OTB applications. 
And the goal is to go large scale with uh, distributed training, for instance, on uh, clusters, on cloud, and, uh, and uh, big uh, data sets. So, the OTB applications are various. There are some applications to extract patches in the images. There are applications to select uh, where you want uh, to extract patches. And uh, there is uh, some um, application to, uh, to, to use the model to process uh, the images with the model. After that, there is a bunch of uh, experimental, I would say, applications. For instance, so you can uh, use uh, classic, uh, traditional classifiers that works on features of uh, deep uh, models. For instance, you can download a pre-trained uh, image uh, um, ResNet or some, something like that. Uh, use uh, some features of the network and uh, use uh, some uh, random forest uh, to uh, work on the, the features of this network. It is interesting, it works, but it's uh, kind of experimental, you know. And uh, yeah, finally, we have some helpers to, to extract polygons uh, statistics, but it's not really uh, the easy point here. Okay, so why uh, streaming is important? Uh, as you know, uh, remote sensing images, uh, time series, uh, they are more and more big, and uh, you have to process them uh, chunk by chunk. And the Orpheo Toolbox has a great uh, foundation uh, to, to process uh, things like that. Uh, Orpheo Toolbox is based on uh, ITK, and uh, ITK uh, subdivide the image into uh, regions, and uh, uh, JDOL writes the output um, in the, the, the layout that you have asked for. And uh, typically, uh, in deep learning, you perform a lot of uh, convolutions, so you want to process uh, square tiles. It's, it's better for the optimize uh, uh, the, uh, the processing time. Uh, so it's uh, very useful to let Orpheo Toolbox uh, manage all this uh, uh, writing layout, uh, processing uh, memory footprint layout, and, so, and stuff like that, and just focus on build a model, train a model, and just run the model into, why not, some complex pipeline like this. This is an example. You have one optical image and one synthetic aperture radar image. You perform some synthetic aperture radar calibration using the offer toolbox. You perform some optical calibration using the offer toolbox. And you, you give the, the output to the model. And after that, you apply some kind of post-processing, like writing the no data flag, uh, extracting some zonal statistics from an additional uh, vector layer, or things like that. Uh, you know, there is actually all this part, which is very common in uh, when you do some operational uh, inference uh, with deep nets. But I will explain later that you can do that uh, directly inside the model. So it's up to you if you want to externalize it like uh, this. And uh, you can do that with OTB, for instance. Or you can do that directly inside the model. And the model is run on the full image, not just on a small uh, chunk that you have to repeat over and over. It just writes the final image in uh, GDOL supported formats. Uh, and that's simple as that. So typically, you will extract some patches using uh, the patches extraction application. So you will have some GOT files. And uh, you can uh, build a data set, which is TensorFlow compliant, uh, from these patches. So from here, uh, the data set object will just uh, read on the fly on the file system the images. This is not very efficient. But uh, in some case, uh, when your bottleneck is a computational part, it's okay. You can just use that. If you want some uh, performance, if you target uh, cloud computing or cluster computing, you have to use the TF record uh, format. And you can just uh, quickly uh, convert this data set into TF record object. And uh, it is quite uh, easy then to use that uh, in a distributed uh, manner. Uh, we have extensively tested uh, this framework on the Jean Zay supercomputer uh, of uh, French Institute for Development uh, uh, with, I don't remember, like 100 GPUs or something like that. So it's really uh, 
performance uh, grade uh, stuff. And uh, the class uh, provided to develop the model, it can look a bit complex like this, but it is very simple. Uh, you just have to override this class when you develop a model, and everything is uh, already prepared uh, to ease the, the work. So, sorry. Okay, uh, typically, this is an example. I create my model in Python, so I import uh, the model based class. class. I implement my model, so here there is like uh, four convolutions and one softmax. It's for, uh, I don't know, land, land cover mapping. So I implement the get output uh, method. And I can also implement some normalization function, you know, to scale the input data, uh, things like that. I can also pre process the data set, for instance, if I want to rename some inputs or normalize the, the, the target uh, data or tar input data. And that's all. I can just uh, use uh, the model, uh, the object uh, like that, uh, as a Keras model. Uh, so, you know, it's really, really simple. So here it's just a minimal example. I don't have put some uh, callbacks, uh, tensor board uh, callbacks, uh, stuff like that, you know, but it just uh, computes some metrics and it, it optimizes my network using the EDM optimizer. And finally, I save the model as my uh, Scala product just uh, before. And then can, I can use it in the, uh, the Airflow Toolbox pipeline uh, from command line like this, or uh, from Python. Uh, this is PyOTB. I strongly encourage you to, to see the presentation of uh, Nicholas uh, in uh, this afternoon. And um, the output post-processing is also a, a, a crucial point in deep learning uh, at operational uh, scale because a few people are, are talking about the uh, blocking artifacts that are uh, generated in the output images of uh, deep nets. And we provide some uh, default uh, post-processing uh, functions that crop the output tensor in these spatial uh, dimensions just to avoid the blocking artifact. This way you can apply fully convolutional models on uh, arbitrary sized chunk and um, and uh, have a, a smooth uh, image, uh, not uh, uh, including uh, blocking artifacts. So, so that's an important point. But you can implement your own, uh, you can just override this method and implement your own post-processing method. Okay, so here are a few examples. I will be very quick. Uh, those are, those are uh, these are examples of uh, real real work uh, that we did with uh, OTBTF. So we mapped uh, the entire France mainland at uh, 1.5 meter from spot six and seven images. Uh, it is a building uh, footprint, so there is different kind of buildings, but it's not really uh, pertinent. It was uh, just a test, a large scale test. And the origi originality is that we, we use a model that process uh, separately the panchromatic and uh, multispectral channel at a different resolution. So we use two input sources in the OTBTF model, and we produce the label at the uh, finest uh, resolution. Uh, we did that also for the uh, so this is a few, uh, yes, nice uh, screenshots. We also did that uh, for the, uh, the forest. Uh, so we mapped uh, the, the whole forest of uh, France uh, uh, from uh, spot uh, six and, uh, and seven images. Uh, so with the exact same approach, uh, we just changed the uh, target uh, data. And uh, we also worked on uh, super resolution. So f you can see f uh, in the left, it's uh, the original Sentinel-2 image. And on the right is the uh, super resoluted image. The model was trained from spot six and seven images. And uh, we trained uh, over France, but in fact it works quite well uh, over the world. Uh, it is uh, Lisbon, previously it was Amsterdam. And uh, this is Oklahoma City. And uh, this is some uh, Pau 2 in China. And it's easy to run, uh, it's a one-liner, and you can also uh, use it uh, if you want to see how it works. You can just call the model like this. So this is from the Python uh, OTB uh, API, and this is from uh, PyOTB. So I recall the, yes, this is tonight, PyOTB. 
go take a look, guys. And uh, we also uh, did a great uh, project uh, recently with the uh, French uh, Space Agency. Uh, we provide uh, pre-trained models for uh, cloud uh, removal in uh, optical images from synthetic aperture radar. And it works, it, just, it, it is just not a <laughs> nice show, you know, it really works. You can, uh, you can process the image uh, in reasonable processing time, like uh, on, uh, on a GPU, it's uh, one minute to process one full uh, Sentinel-2 image. And uh, you can uh, even use CPU because uh, this is a small models. But uh, yes, it depends. We have some uh, monotemporal approach, uh, some uh, multi temporal approach, and the multi-temporal approach, of course, uses uh, time series instead of one single scene, and we have, of course, uh, better results. So um, this is four year or reconstructed uh, spot uh, Sentinel-2 images. Uh, so uh, it's an area in the south of France. Uh, we provide pre and model only on the uh, south of France. Uh, it was the, the uh, location of our study. It's like uh, a 10 Sentinel-2 ties. Uh, in a geographical area. So yes, so th this approach, I think, works really, really well. It's really interesting. But uh, yes, if you want to read more, I invite you to, to, to read our, our paper and uh, take a look on, uh, on this blog. Uh, yes, that th this is really exciting times because we have a lot of data and uh, we can do a lot of things with deep learning. And uh, we have also side projects, uh, for instance, uh, rock mappings. Uh, this is uh, some uh, problem uh, in France uh, where uh, farmers, uh, they, they break the rocks uh, in, the, in their field, but sometimes they do, know, do not have the rights because it is a protected uh, re natural resource because there is some uh, uh, animals uh, that live here and stuff like that. So uh, some, uh, some guys from the La Telescope company did a mapping and have compared the random forest, uh, the SVM, and the uh, convolutional neural networks uh, using OTBTF. And they found that uh, the convolutional neural networks uh, were uh, more pertinent. Uh, OTBTF is also used in the TALAN data center to produce uh, the uh, soil moisture maps uh, of the world from uh, Sentinel-1 uh, products. So it is uh, used only as a base uh, component for the uh, TensorFlow uh, uh, into uh, images uh, part. And uh, yes, uh, that's it, guys. Uh, okay. I, I, I will do a small recap. So what you can do, I didn't put a slide uh, on what you cannot do because so what you can do is use the OTP applications to, to create some data sets for, with patches extraction, with patches selection. You can use the, the original framework of OTB for uh, sample selection, for instance. You can build models in Python. You can train models either from command line interface using OTB applications, but I recall that it's really for educational purpose for beginners. If you, want, if you really want to, 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 to work seriously, you have to, to develop in Python and uh, use the the uh, OTBTF dataset classes. And finally, you can do some distributed training with TensorFlow 2, which is really great because instead of uh, taking days to train your model, it just takes uh, hours, so it's important. And um, yes, finally, you can run models uh, in OTB pipelines, which are streamable from end to end uh, with reduced memory footprint. And uh, yes. That's it. We have some future work, of course, like uh, improve the Python API. Since this is new, we, we will uh, improve it a, a bit over the time. And uh, maybe add more examples in the documentation and make lighter Docker images, improve a bit the CI because we, we rebuild each time and it's not really efficient, but we will work on that. It does not concern the user. And um, we have some limitation uh, on the compilation of uh, OTB and TensorFlow. We, we, we have to fix that. And finally, uh, we will work on the integration in PyOTB to really ease the um, mutual interactions between NumPy, uh, X-rays, uh, TensorFlow, and, uh, and OTB applications. Uh, I have uh, finished. Thank you. Thank you, Remy.